Uh, in this episode of From Mill to Still, we are gonna hammer down and knock out this floor. You saw us open the, the tomb and found the skeleton before. Well, now we're, we're gonna knock out all 5,556 square feet of floor so that we can backfill the crawl space and pour concrete for our distillery. I'm super excited about this part. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, enjoy. Because the floor was as shallow as a foot deep, or sorry, the earth was as shallow as a foot deep in the crawl space and as deep as 12 feet. As we went further and further into the building, we had to build a road. Where the skid steer is sitting right now, just to the left, there was the original brick wall from the 1875 section of building. They knocked that wall down just barely enough to build a floor on top of it. And when I say just barely enough, they were three inches lower than the structural planks that were pulling up right there. So that floor was, you know, is 26 inches thick wall. They didn't tear a brick out that they didn't have to. Uh, we brought in ABC stone to build this road across the building. And then you can see off to the, the footings on either side, those, those came out, the ones not with post on them. Uh, and you can kind of get an idea here of the new floor. The concrete will be poured up to the level of the top of that post. Before we can start slinging stone into this building, we got to finish tearing out the floor. So this is a giant time-lapsed montage basically of us doing that. This was hopefully what will be the hardest undertaking that we go through at the the mill. It was pretty intense. There was six inch spikes holding the, the tongue and groove structural flooring to these beams. There was a pile of steel in here. You can see where we're using the bobcat to just just piece by piece, remove everything. And this took place over the course of 150 feet of flooring. We saved all of the, the, uh, the material that we could. So there's piles in the yard of uh, I-beams and three ply two by 12s. There's piles of, there's pallets of maple tongue and groove flooring. It was all taken up. It's so much harder to remove material that you plan on reusing versus just taking chainsaws and just hacking it all to pieces. Uh, but it's nice. The 2x12 three-plies we'll use to do structural repairs on the building, temporary supports. We may do like a lean-to kind of roof system for uh, farmer's markets. That would be nice. We're going to use the maple flooring to do repairs on the second and third floor. So that maple will be put back where it was damaged on other places. We're also gonna save the rest of the maple flooring because you never know when we may wanna you know, restore part of the first floor to its former glory. Uh, we could always put sleepers down on top of the concrete and put maple flooring back to show what the building used to look like more specifically on that floor. Um, but everything to, you know, long story short, everything was done with the intent of full respect for the historic structure and you know, what it was about pre-1946. So uh, we're taking care of the building as best we can. This was a fun part of the video. Uh, right here is where we started tearing out that wall, that 1875 wall. All this brick, by the way, was saved for uh, filling in holes and stuff. I actually needed to cut the steel I-beam that was in this corner. And the reason I had to cut that was because uh, you just couldn't remove it safely between those two those two posts. Uh, you They were balancing on a ledge of granite. Actually, the post closest to the loading door where kind of where my back is as I cut this beam, that post was on a footing that was hollow underneath. And you're going to want to subscribe to this channel because we ended up finding some weird stuff in that footing. That footing was built in 1916 and there was some straight up creepy stuff inside of it. So stay tuned for a weekly update where we uh, reveal what was in that that footing.
this is a pretty cool new perspective. You know, we did a lot of recording from the break where the 18, 6, 1875 building met the 1916 section. I'm about two thirds in on the structure now, so you can kind of see the flooring that's left. We're backfilling a little bit. That was actually relatively shallow, the newer section. The 1916 section had concrete uh, footing walls and the 1875 section had stacked granite foundation walls. It's cool to see how the construction practices changed over time. Made some discoveries over here where we're putting stone in the corner. We found old liquor bottles and you know obviously to a distillery that's a really cool find. I think they were gin bottles. We'll have shadow boxes everywhere. We found a lot of liquor bottles and a lot of beer cans and medicine bottles and things like that. Over in that corner there's also a boulder that's twice the size of my truck holding up the corner of that building. It's it's crazy. The the addition that you're looking at was actually built in 1916. This is a pretty cool section where you can see us removing the boulders. This skid steer could only get boulders that were so big out. Uh, we later had the mini excavator and a bigger skid steer to help us with that, but uh, these guys are wrestling these boulders out of the building. And like I said, over a hundred boulders and it's very steep. The, the video doesn't do it justice, but you know, we're chaining these things up and moving them around and they're building a, um, a roadway so that they don't fall into the, the crawl space here. But it's, it's pretty cool to see, you know, piece by piece, every single boulder was snatched from the building. So a big part, once all of the structural decking was off of the floor, a big part of this removal was us pulling the, uh, the floor joist out. For some reason, every other floor joist, as you can see here, is a three ply two by 12. And in between those, was a steel I-beam, 12 inch steel I-beam with a, a four inch pad on top, a four inch nailer was bolted to the I-beam so you could bolt, or so you could nail the spikes of the structural floor into it, securing the floor above the I-beam. The floor was pretty stout. It had uh, pocketed into the brick on one end and then sat on a steel beam in the middle of the structure. That steel beam is gonna end up coming out that everything was sitting on and it had two intermediate footings across it. So I think somewhere you could see in the previous section where uh, maybe flooring part one, we start driving the bobcat on the structural floor. This floor could handle a lot of weight. What this floor can't handle with the new distillery moving into it is uh, 30,000 plus pound tanks. The dead load that liquid filled vats are gonna put on the floor, there is just no way a wooden structure would hold that. You could put point loads into the ground, but that would be individual footings and it would just be, you know, if we decided to move a tank a couple inches, we'd have to move the footing also. So that wasn't an option. I love this perspective of the building. This is the 1875 section. So we're at the, the, the break between the 1916 section and the 1875 looking back and you just see how well the natural light floods into this space. Uh, you can also see how hard it was to get this stuff out of here. So each of these timbers, each of these, these older section structural timbers we had to, to cut the tongue in between the two boards. Otherwise, it would split the grooves out of each one. And cutting that, I think we used 20 or 30 Diablo demo skill saw blades. Like, it was, you never knew when you were going to hit a spike or a nail, and it, it was a lot of work. And uh, I actually fell through the floor here. I say I fell through the floor. I started to fall by stepping on a board that wasn't secured. 
like some sort of weird cartoon and I flung my body while holding a four foot crowbar over a floor joist like a wet towel. Uh, I think my ribs are still healing from that. But anyway, that's that's pretty cool to, to see that floor and it was still there. And I hope I never have to do that kind of work again. So part of what's slowing us down backfilling this crawl space is the fact that that door is exactly as wide as our machinery. So one bucket at a time, we put about uh, 400 tons of stone and the guys running the, the skid steer, Trinity and John and Grant are really good at it. So they're doing it about as fast as they can, but I think it's time that we do something else because we've still got another thousand or so tons to go. Yeah, time to bring in the big equipment. Wait, wait, wait. I'm getting ahead of myself. Help me back up a little and explain how we got here. What you just saw was us slinging stone into the mill. Dump truck by dump truck, my buddy found us a slinger truck. He said, hey, you know, you're driving through this little hole, you should get one of these guys and they'll pump it for you. And I met a company out and they talked about how they could pump it and what that would cost. And then I, I said, okay, well, the cost per yard is crazy. So they said, we have this other truck that's got a giant conveyor belt on the back of it. And you can fill it with stone from the quarry. We're using 57 stone. He said, we can throw it 70 feet, which is almost halfway into the building. I said, well, let's give it a try. And so he comes out and they pump stone. They can unload 17 tons of stone in about 10 minutes. And it was really cool to see them slinging stone in there. I wouldn't want to be on the landing end of that conveyor. Uh, so they back up to one of the windows and they would sling stone and then they would leave back to the quarry and come back again. Sounds really cool. There's one giant downside and that downside is that the conveyor is attached to the dump truck. So when the dump truck's empty and leaves, the conveyor goes with it. And you can only go as fast as the turnaround time of these slinger trucks. So. Because of that, you're at the mercy of how efficient the quarry is and how far away it is. In our case, it just so happened that roads were shut down and that truck had to take the long way to the quarry. The quarry had a loader that was down and so the loader was backed up. I think at one point he sent me a picture of a mile long line of dump trucks waiting for the quarry. Now you're paying this slinger truck by the hour and he's only running a truck every three hours. Your cost per yard goes astronomically high and at the end of all of it even on the most efficient day they could only process about six loads uh, we went back to loading the next 800 tons of stone with the skid steers and we had two of them going so it actually didn't take that long we could actually lift uh, with the 57 stone about four feet per day and we had 12 feet to go total so not so bad Oh baby, you got what I need. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So we made it through most of the floor. Officially, all of the tugging groove is out of this freaking first floor. That was one of the most difficult things I've ever had to demo. Those boards were two and a half inches thick by seven and a half inches wide, and they were secured every four feet with spikes, like eight inch spikes. And we couldn't just like tear it up and throw it away. That floor had to be disassembled so that we could reuse all of that historic fabric. We got some really cool boards out of it that turns out we're gonna build our bar out of and maybe some other furniture in the cocktail bar area. We may be able to sell some of that historic lumber. So if you're looking for historic lumber, we got like thousands of square feet of it. So check us out at our website and send us an email. Anyway, once we got this floor uncovered, we really got a good, bright, open look of these old footings. The outside walls are very secure, almost 30 inches thick, but the center posts that go down the building are mostly held together with stacked stone footings. Stacked stone means old as shit. And uh, you can see I could get my finger and my whole hand in between these granite blocks here. The engineer is not super happy. He's not super happy to the extent that he's literally moving an office trailer out to the job site to watch the fix for this. The fix for this will be a giant concrete trench footing that runs down the center of the building. Over the past 120 something years, this building has settled in the center about three inches. And uh, that settled, I guess, I don't know, maybe even 100 years ago and stopped. But <clears throat> we don't feel confident in these footings anymore, so we are gonna put a new footing in. And that, that will be a very exciting part of our series, watching us lift the center of this building over three inches uh, and then put in all new beams, all new capitals, sorry, all new posts and all new capitals. Super excited about that. So stay tuned. On a beam, baby. We get over here and we see a coffin from the early 1800s. Whoa, it's drone time. That is so cool. All right, just before anybody gets to, you know, out of hand in the comments section here, that's me, the owner up there setting up the camera so I can get this glorious footage that we're all watching. Uh, and I know it's not the safest thing, but it's relatively the safest thing. And it's it was definitely the quickest thing. So yeah, that's just me setting up the time-lapse camera from the old section to the new. I really like this part of the video because you can see we built a road on the lower side and it gives you an idea of the scale of the backfill. That is a deep crawl space and it just shows you like how much work and how much stone, almost three million pounds of stone to get up to a level where we can pour concrete. Here you can see an old furnace room. Uh, it's not a boiler room, it's just a furnace room. There was a gas, natural gas furnace here, uh, probably put in in the 70s if I had to guess we had all the the uh, fire tiles and the the plaster walls were all tested for asbestos and they were not hot so that was good and uh, then we were able to demo this and that was that's kind of fun you know that was just one of those one you know knocking that down with the mini excavator versus you know chipping it away by hand was was a lot of fun to see that happen so fast so we knocked it all down and then we drug it out and threw it in dumpsters. A lot of these block and stuff we actually reuse to pad out masonry walls and repair them. Uh, you know, as you're pulling the floor joist out of this building, the masons are literally the same day going back and fixing that wall because the new floor will be 18 inches lower than the original floor. So all those beam pockets and messed up bricks and, and wooden ledgers had to be removed and masonry put back in their place and that will eventually be plastered over. So uh, it, it'll be cool. You'll see traces of what used to be there when we're all 100% done and running. You'll see where the beam pockets have been replaced, where the old uh, crawl space vents were. You'll see all of that. Uh, it'll also be cool just out of scene here, you'll, you'll be able to see where the old crawl space door was and you'll still be able to open it and you'll just see some giant concrete blocks put uh put in front of it so it'll be just kind of showing where things used to be and how they used to be in presto we have a crawl space full of gravel three million pounds of it we're almost there we're going to go to the bottom of the cmus or the top of the brick you got trinity here the master backfiller that guy 
knows how to work a skid steer. It is pretty impressive to see him uh, do stuff around the site with that thing. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Stay tuned for the final layer of gravel. We'll show you that in our first weekly update coming out this week. Super exciting. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment below if you want to see anything in particular, or if you have any questions. We have so much coming out as we restore this glorious old building. It is so cool to see how we will transform it into Muddy River Distillery. Thanks so much for watching. Don't be dumb. Drink Carolina rum. Cheers.